We're staged for another run of nitro-fueled NHRA talk. It's The Straight Line, presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts, with Marty Huff and 10-time NHRA winner Doug Herbert. Brought to you by Hercules Tires. Now, here are your hosts, Doug and Marty. This is The Straight Line on Drag Racing. Thanks for stopping by our half-hour horsepower. Appreciate you being with us. Between our two guests today, they've won five races in a row. Pro Stock Motorcycle winner Ellie Tonglet has earned two straight wallies, and Ron Capps pocketed his third in a row in Atlanta. We're in the beams and set to launch another edition of The Straight Line. Wherever you may be, coast to coast, around the world, this is The Straight Line on Drag Racing at MRN.com. Along with four-time IHRA Top Fuel Champion and 10-time NHRA National Event winner Doug Herbert, I am Marty Huff. And like I said, Doug, five in a row between the two guests that we've had. You've been on rolls like this where you just show up and you've, you've won two in a row, three in a row, or four out of five or something like that. What is it like as a driver when you step onto the property and you've won that many in a row? What's that like? Your confidence level is sky high. Yeah, I can right? promise you that. Yeah, every... <laughs> You'd pull the starting line and you have confidence. Like you're in the zone. Uh, you know that everybody else is going to have to beat you. They're, yeah. You know, things are just going so well. But that's when, you know, things tend to go wrong sometimes too. <laughs> but, you know, uh, Ron Tobler, Ron Caps, they have really gotten, obviously won the championship last year. They've, I think they've gotten better since then. Yeah. Uh, even yeah. since last year. They're, that's scary. They're really on a roll. I mean, they've got all the resources of Don Schumacher Racing. Plus, you know, Tobler does his own little thing on the side, and I think the fact that uh, Ron and Ron and Ron are, you know, they they really are on the same page. They've been working together long enough. Uh, you know, I've worked with guys long enough where you you working with them uh, and you just look at them and you look a certain way, and they know what you want. Yeah. Like you don't have to tell them everything; they yeah. just know what you want. And I'm guessing that. Ron Tobler and Ron Caps have that kind of a relationship now. They they know how to win together. Like they don't need to they don't need to discuss all these things because they right. already know. Yeah, and it's not like they're going out and bludgeoning them every weekend. I mean, they're not setting you know world record times or anything like that. Uh, it, I mean, they're just going out and being consistent up there. And you win 12 in a row. You win 12 rounds in a row. I mean, those are, and actually it'd be 11 rounds in a row because uh, there's four wides here. You only get three. Um, but uh, it's still uh, very significant in what they're doing and the consistency that they're bringing. That's the what Tobler's always done. Go down the track and run good. Make yeah. the other guy beat you. It's kind of like a Dick LaHaye. That's what Dick LaHaye did. Yeah, right. Go down the track, exactly. run well, make the other car beat you. And when you do that, Boy, you you know you do pretty well. The in the semis over there, we'll talk to Ron uh, Caps a little bit about that. But their car was the only car to go down the track. The other three cars all smoked the tires. Uh, Ron Caps' car went down the track. Yeah, that is the kind of deal that wins races, especially coming into these next uh, few months here, where we're going to have hot tracks, slick tracks. Uh, you know, Norwalk and Denver and. Uh, you know, Brainerd, just places where yeah. the tracks tend to be yeah. tricky. You know, St. Louis, uh, Topeka, Bristol. Bristol. Yeah, I mean, all these are places where it gets warm during the day yeah. and it gets tricky to go to that track. Ron Tobler knows how to do that. Yeah, and uh, that experience factor, and you just talked about that, that relationship uh, of whether it's a crew chief or whether it be uh, people on your crew because you tuned your own cars. But when you look at somebody and, and just give them a nod, you, you, just, you just look a certain way and they know immediately, bang. Yeah. Okay. You, well, you, and the crew guys are that way too. One crew guy will be working on something and the other guy knows what he needs and hands him a wrench or hands him a tool or whatever. Yeah, right. It's the way that I guarantee you their team is working like that. It's the same as Antron Brown's team. They've worked yeah. together for a long time. They know what to do before. They don't even need to talk about it. They just know, and it just happens. And that's one of the reasons I think why Antron's Brown crew is so good with Mark Oswald, Brian Karate, and uh, you know, even yeah. a lot of the crew guys have been there a long time. Yeah. Same thing with Ron Cap's team. They have been there. They know what to do. They're comfortable working with each other. And you don't have to waste time talking about it because you just know what to do. You know what the other guy wants. And, and it's infectious because it's obvious that it, that entire attitude is permeated throughout the Don Schumacher pits. Uh, when you go to the races, all the Don Schumacher teams, whether it's Funny Car, 
or, or dragster, they are pitted side by side by side by side. Yeah. So you know it, it makes the communication a whole lot easier. But obviously, when you get on rolls like this, um, that attitude is infectious throughout the entire team. It wouldn't shock me at all if somebody from that team, again, whether it's Antron or, or somebody else, you know, went on a roll like that. Uh, you know what? It could very well happen yeah. because they are they are that good. And it's yeah. and it's like I said, Caps. Uh, We'll talk to him about that in a minute, but he was great and consistent on the lights all day. The car was great and consistent all day. Uh, he got it done. I mean, yeah. he just flat got it done. There's no two ways about it. The guy that's been getting it done uh, for quite some time, his 53rd win uh, in his career, third in a row here in 2017, Ron Caps will join us next. Where will you be when NASCAR comes to Chicago's fastest loop? Four days of racing, tailgating, camping, and music come to Chicagoland Speedway September 14th through the 17th. Tickets for Sunday Chicagoland 400 are available now. Camping spots are available and selling fast. All kids tickets $25 off adult price and free on certain race days. Get your tickets and campsite now at ChicagolandSpeedway.com. Chicagoland Speedway, the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series playoffs start here. Hey, this is Dylan Hart Jr. here. When I have friends and guests at the track who want to hear me during the race, appreciate all the hard work. I send them the racing electronics. Dale Earnhardt Jr. will win. That's because if you're not listening to all the action live, oh, yeah. you're missing out. Yeah. Go to racingelectronics.com to pre rent for great discounts on scanners Check the flag right here. Big wreck in your mirror. and fan vision rentals. Checkered flag ready to fly. It's Earnhardt in turn three. Or see racing electronics and fan vision trackside at every NASCAR race. I love you, man. Thank you. Unbelievable. It's time to start pouring concrete, and the Housby Mixer System is ready for the job. The Housby Mixer System was created specifically with the driver mind. All controls and specs are completely customizable to your operations. Our durable, driver-friendly mixer can be mounted on all truck types, and our expert support is second to none. On-site and live phone support is just a phone call away. For more information, visit Housby.com. Housby, an official sponsor of NASCAR for over 40 years. Welcome back to The Straight Line, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Here's more with Marty Huff and Doug Herbert. Thanks for being with us today on MRN.com and The Straight Line. Along with Doug Herbert, I am Marty Huff. And joining us on the telephone line right now is the driver of the Napa Dodge. He's the 2016 Funny Car World Champion and winner of three in a row. Ron Caps joins us. Ron, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. And uh, congratulations, three in a row, man. Hey guys, yeah, what uh, what an incredible three weeks, and you know they, I started hearing that termed as the Southern Swing with those yeah. three races, <laughs> and which is unique because we we've got certain parts of the country we go to when we've got the West Coast Swing and and then the East Coast Swing, and um, I got to say, man, that was three of the toughest races. More, and it messed up just like our West Coast Swing where we got Denver, then you go down to sea level and up to Seattle. I mean, it was as different as you could get. And uh, you throw the pro wide in, in the middle of it, and then you got pretty difficult weekends. Well, your second win in Atlanta Dragway, obviously uh, you got it figured out. Man, the car was consistent. You were consistent. And it's like, and we've talked about it before, you and Tobler are on like the same wavelength. I'm sure of that by now. You're like, <laughs> you, you look at him, and he knows what you're thinking, and vice versa. Well, there was, a, there was a lot more going on than I think a lot of people saw, especially at home watching on TV. That... I just did another interview and I told uh, that guy, I, that was probably the toughest Sunday driving wise, getting down the track, doing all the right stuff that I've had in a long time. It really, it brought out a lot of in us, but you got to take that a step further. It had to have been real tough on crew chiefs. I know it was us being that left lane. It had a lot of bumps in it, a lot of really tricky things that Toler had to figure out to get the car through there. Um, the right lane seemed, to, it wasn't as bad bump wise, but, but it wasn't as good traction wise at certain parts. So you really had a, a mismatch, but at the same time, it, it brought the character out in that racetrack where you had to choose what you thought was best for your car. And we actually chose the left lane, which wasn't the preferred lane and won several of those rounds Sunday in that left lane. Um, and then lost lane choice, the height and the semis that they chased, they, they kept to the right lane where they were running pretty good um, early in the day. And, and just, uh, it was a crazy weekend. Well, you guys were the only car to go down the track in the semifinal round. Yeah, you know what? Now, yeah, I just watched it on TV, and I was just slow-mo watching how crazy those bumps were. I knew in the car how crazy it was every run. We were wearing so much clutch. He was having to, to huh. really 
sort of cripple or stop the clutch from wearing and, and trying to lock up at certain points during the run over those bumps. And that's something you just don't do very easy as a crew chief. So at, when that's happened, it's throwing clutch dust up inside the car that almost makes it black inside. It's, uh, it's like, you know, pulling one of those, those curtains you get in a hotel room and you just pull it shut. It's hard enough to see in a funny car yet that's happening at the same time. So, you know, everything kind of, just it just every time we go down the track i i hit the shoots so i was on the radio going man you guys are unbelievable i can't believe it even went down that lane so considering everything and you were in, in both lanes uh, how important was lane choice uh, was that a, a part of the strategy when you were going in or did it really matter well the, the weird thing about lane choice is it's great to have i guess most of the time sometimes I'll be honest with you. There's a lot of tracks that are so even, you almost don't want it. You don't want to have to worry about it. Hmm. And uh, But this place was, like I said, it, the left lane was not the preferred lane, yet we just felt like there was something. If we could if we could just stop the clutch for a beat over those several bumps somehow, and again, it's me talking as a driver as if I really know what's going on. <laughs> um, but, but, I, but I sort of know how everything works in a car from working on them all these years, so I understand what he was doing, but the methodical approach that he has with Hop, our assistant crew chief, um, and what they did to go down. And you got to remember, we also went three second runs every run on Sunday. So yeah, the yeah. heat, the humidity, the difficult conditions of the track, it was, you know, it's like those, those NASCAR guys when they raced uh, Darlington. You know, it's a, it's a full day when you got out of the car, you felt like you really did something. <laughs> How about uh, Atlanta, we know, is the headquarters to Napa. So I'm sure your Napa guys had to be out there at the track. There's a little bit of excitement. That always uh, not a bad thing to bring home a win for your sponsor in their hometown. No. And, you know, like I said at the end of the day in the press room, I said, I, you know, if, if, it, it would take me not winning a race, but I, I, I sort of wish every sponsored team could could uh, could fulfill that dream of winning in the backyard of your major sponsor. And I've gotten to do it. I'm lucky enough I've gotten to do it with our many of our executives at different races. But when it's there at the backyard, it's the backyard of Coca-Cola, who is, you know, Mellie Yellow is our series yeah. sponsor. Right. So a lot going on with that location, with, with a lot of pressure from a lot of different teams, but especially us with Napa. And uh, Dan Askey, the president, was there, gave him the trophy, spent winter circle with him and his wife, and then he took the trophy into headquarters on Monday morning. And that's, uh, that's something you don't get to do. Um, sometimes, as you know, Doug, it, it's, it's hard to do, but if you can pull it off, it goes beyond words uh, for the, you know, your future, your Rose pro the program, your racing team and, and everything. Oh, yeah, exactly. I was lucky enough to have that happen at Chicago years ago when all my snap on guys were at Chicago and then went up there and the next day with the trophy. There's, that's a really good pep rally, you know, when you can do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ron, and tell us. Oh, and I'm and sorry. on top of that, having people there at the track celebrate yeah. with you on a Sunday, you know, from, oh, from yeah. the company, as big as having a president and vice president there. Ron, I know it's pretty early to be thinking about points, but when you're looking, I mean, you're already, you've got a hundred point lead almost. That's a, that's a pretty incredible uh, to have at this point in the, in the season. And, yeah. you know, uh, and, uh, Marty and I were talking about it earlier. It's like your team is good enough, obviously, to win the championship last year, so pretty darn good. And it seems to me like looking and watching what's going on, you're still getting better. That's, that's pretty going to be pretty tough and maybe bad news for the rest of the competition. Well, you, we all know they're going to – I mean, Wilkerson showed that he's, you know, he's obviously he had a car that, that very capable that should have won the race and could have won the race. And a lot of these teams are coming around. Courtney Force has been running good every week and low qualifiers. So we know that car is capable. It's just, you go down the list of cars, it's incredible. And my teammates always know the championship's got to go through my teammates. Um, yeah, it's great. But, you know, you know me. And, and the approach I have is sun, or Friday when we show up in Topeka in two weeks for qualifier number three, and I'm sitting in the car, winning the last race or even winning the last three races isn't even in my brain. Like, I, 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 I've been lucky enough that I, I – you know, you approach every race like you need to go rounds. And uh, and we're also smart enough um, to know that you, you, we're not going to win all of them. We just got to need to try to do the best we can at each one of them because now NHRA made it even tougher to win the championship before the last race in Pomona. Like last year, we didn't win a race to the countdown, and we were consistent, and we won by pressure everybody and consistency. But now they added that new thing where Pomona is going to be points and a half. Right. So 
no matter what goes in and you come out of Las Vegas in, in October, it doesn't matter. You could be fourth or fifth theoretically in points going into the last race of the season and the champion won't even be crowned until after qualifying and possibly until Sunday afternoon. So we're just going to try to keep doing what we're doing. Hey, yeah. real quick, I uh, want to ask, have you made up with force yet? Um, he was <laughs> he was not real happy with you at Char here at Charlotte uh, if, 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 in a long story, but um, – uh, if you were at the top end, actually conducting uh, one of the interviews at the top end, uh, taking the mic from Joe Castello from uh, from NHRA. Um, have you kissed him, made up? Yeah, we're always fine. Uh, he knows, you know. Listen, he a lot of stuff I do, I learn from him. And uh, he talk, <laughs> right, he, yeah, it's good to get under his skin once in a while. And I know how to do it, and but it's fun. <laughs> he knows that it's nothing personal, and we have fun with it. And uh, we were even texting each other after that happened, uh, even before the final round in Charlotte, that, uh, you know, it was all in good fun. <laughs> all right. Ron Capps, winner of three in a row, 2016 Funny Car Champion. Thanks so much for your time. Congratulations, and good luck at Topeka in two weeks. You got it, man. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Ron Capps, uh, right now on an incredible roll and in trying to keep that momentum going towards Topeka. When we return, we will talk to the 2010 Pro Stock Motorcycle Champion and now owner of two Wallies in a row, Ellie Tonglet, will join us next. Citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. In order to maximize a vehicle's performance and efficiency, the proper adjustments need to be made based on the road ahead. That's true for both race car drivers on the track and for truck drivers hauling freight on the highway. But if your truck's equipped with a Detroit DT12 automated manual transmission with intelligent powertrain management, adjustments are made automatically based on GPS terrain mapping, maximizing performance and efficiency. Don't just want better business solutions, demand them. Learn more at DemandDetroit.com. This is Ashley Strebe. And I'm Steve Post. MRN's Wing Nation is hitting the road yet again to one of the country's premier dirt tracks, the Speed Palace, Port Royal Speedway. Join Ashley and I for Weikert's Livestock Wing Nation on Saturday, May 27th and Sunday, May 28th during the Bob Weikert Memorial Race weekend at Port Royal Speedway. We will be live behind the front stretch grandstands from 5 to 6 each afternoon getting you ready for the Bob Weikert Memorial. Join us live at the Speed Palace or listen on MRN.com or the MRN app. It's the Straight Line, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Now, once again, here's Doug and Marty. Appreciate you being with us on MRN.com and the Straight Line. Along with Doug, I am Marty, and joining us on the telephone line right now is winner of two in a row. First here in Charlotte, North Carolina, where he won the four wides, and then back-to-back -back at Atlanta. L.A. Tongla joins us. L.A., thanks for the uh, time today, and congratulations on two in a row, man. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's a great accomplishment. How about that? You went in there, you got low ET, top speed, and on race day, you had low ET of every round. Like, yeah. dude, you're on a roll, man. That is <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we haven't had a low ET event in quite some time now, and to be able to do that, is, it's a great accomplishment. Ellie, tell us about the cooperation uh, arrangement that you have with Jerry Savoie, obviously the champion from last year. Uh, you know, you guys got to the final together. The, you know, the bikes are running good. The, obviously, the relationship has got to be pretty happy. Yeah, the relationship's going very good. We knew when uh, we formed this team, you know, Jerry approached us. We knew this team would be a badass team, and mm -hmm. we knew that we would win races and, and get to the final round together. We just didn't think it would come this soon because my bike is all new stuff. Tim Kalungian built it over the off off season, so everything's new on it and to be running like it is in the third race is it's a it's just incredible well with that bike having low et of every round when you go to the final round was jerry say hey you know maybe we should switch bikes he said let me take that motor out yeah i bet he's a good he's a good guy he just wants to see both bikes run as fast as they can and 
believe me, uh, I was looking at Jerry's reaction times going, man, I need to step it up or he's going to beat me on a whole shot. And uh, he had some electrical problem, and it, it just didn't take off, and I got the wind light. So next time in the final round together, it's going to be a, a lot closer of a race. I guarantee you that. Now, we just got done talking to Ron Caps, and he was talking about how tricky the track was and, and he's running a nitro car. How tricky or how uh, difficult was it for you on a pro stock motorcycle? They talk about a lot of bumps. Uh, there's a new piece of pavement in there. Uh, what were the challenges of getting up and down that racetrack? The biggest challenge is just trying to stay straight as possible because, <laughs> like you said, the, each lane has its fair share of bumps. And we were actually the only bike on Sunday in round one that chose to go in the right lane. We had lane choice. We picked the right lane. Everybody else went left lane, and we just felt we could get down the right lane as fast as the left lane. So it's just you got if you get out the groove, you're going to hit a bunch of bumps, and it's going to slow you down. So you just got to concentrate and stay in the groove, right in the, in, the, uh, in the middle of the two-tire track. Hey, Ellie, you were pulling about, or talking about pulling up to the final and ha- knowing that you had to get a good light, and you pulled out a good light, like <laughs> yeah, 7,000s from being perfect. Like, you you, uh, you were in the zone, man. It looks to like not only was were you, but your bike, every, your team was. Yeah, everything's just it's going very good right now. And yeah. Like I said, I pulled up knowing I had to cut a light. Tim pulled me in on the side, the crew chief for both bikes. He said, hey, Jerry's cutting team lights. You're at 040. You're going to have to step it up. And uh, he gave me a couple uh, pointers to try, and it, it worked. I mean, it picked up almost four uh, four hundredths of a second in reaction time. What is, uh, is 007 a little bit close for comfort, especially in a final round? Yeah, that's a little close, you know, but, <laughs> hey, I'll take it as long as it's green. <laughs> yeah, 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 you got that right. Uh, Ellie, is this the first time that you've went back to back, and how does that feel to be uh, to to go into the next race in Topeka, being back to back winner with the previous two? Uh, this isn't the first time we went back to back. We did actually did three in a row in uh, 2010 when we oh. won the championship yep. that year. Yep, yep, okay, yep. yep. But to go back to back this early, it's it's a it's huge. You know, it builds so much confidence for me and the team and. To have both bikes in the finals is just, it's bad for the rest of the class because we got all kinds of confidence now, and it's going to be great. You know, we don't go to Topeka, but we do right. our next race is uh, New Jersey. Well, going to Englishtown, you're the only one that can go three in a row then, so that's a, that'll be a good one to have uh, on your side too. Oh, yeah. we I'd love to go three in a row. Hopefully uh, we can get to four. I've never done that before. <laughs> and, and, and right now, sitting second in points as uh, we have the graphic up on our screen, uh, that's going to give you a lot of uh, confidence as well because right now you're in between those two Harley riders. Yeah, if you look at it, the top four bikes is the two Harleys and yep. the two war bikes. So it's going to be a battle come into the year. Hopefully uh, it's the two Suzuki's, one and two. I don't care which position <laughs> I am <laughs> as long as we're in front of the Harleys. Now, Ellie, it sounds like you're at work. Would I be correct in that? Yeah. Yeah, I am at work with my dad right now. Uh, and, and, well, uh, what do uh, – tell the people for may not know um, exactly what you do because uh, you do have a 9-to-5 job. Yeah, um, I'm a full-time firefighter right outside New Orleans. And um, – I got off this morning at 7 a.m. and I came right over to my dad's shop. He fixes hydraulic cylinders. So get off from the fire station, come work over here till 5, 6 o'clock, and then head home. It's just all we do is work so that we're able to go race. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Well, it sounds like your hard work is paying off, Ellie. Great job uh, winning over here these last two races, and best of luck now going to Englishtown. That. You, uh, you, man, you really got it together. Really proud of you guys and your team and what you put together. Yeah, I wish it was my hard work, but I got to give all the credit to Tim and Jerry for assembling one badass team. And I'm just happy to be a part of it. Thanks to Kenny Koreski with Nitro Fish. Without him, none of this would be possible. Winner of two in a row and uh, looking for a second championship down the road. Ellie Tongla, thanks so much for your time. We really appreciate it. 
Oh, thanks for having me. That's Ellie Tonglet, and uh, when we return, we will wrap up another great edition of the show. Being there matters, and your United States Navy protects and defends America on the world's oceans. Around the globe, around the clock, Navy ships, submarines, aircraft, and most importantly, tens of thousands of America's finest young men and women are ready to defend America. When piracy threatens global commerce, when disaster strikes, or when called upon by the Commander-in-Chief, your Navy is there. When it comes to protecting and defending America, being there matters. And America's Navy is already there. Motor Racing Network has always been your source for motorsports coverage when you couldn't be at the track. Now, never miss another minute of our breathtaking coverage with the MRN app, available on your iPhone or Android device. This free app delivers all the latest news, locates nearby MRN stations, streams your favorite programs, and is your home for live cup practice and qualifying action. Search MRN in the App Store or on Google Play. It's the Motor Racing Network at your fingertips, and it's available for free right now. Live sports are the one true reality entertainment where a single dramatic moment can become timeless. In NASCAR, Motor Racing Network's live broadcast elevates your senses to the sights, sounds, and struggles taking place on the racetrack. Danica Patrick to the front of the field at Talladega. They are side by side behind her. Jimmy Johnson. The power of radio to the imagination of the listener. Tune in to the Motor Racing Network. Visit MRN.com for an affiliate list in your local area. You're listening to The Straight Line, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Now, back to Marty Huff and Doug Herbert. Hey, y'all, the second annual Country Music 500 is coming to Daytona International Speedway, May 26th through the 28th. The World Center of Racing becomes the World Racing of uh, the, the World Center of Entertainment on Memorial Day weekend with performances by Blake Shelton, Kid Rock, Miranda Lambert, Keith Urban, maybe you've heard of these people, Brooks and Dunn, many, many more uh, for more information and to buy your either one or three day passes, visit country500.com. That's a big deal for us here uh, at MRN Radio as uh, my nine to five job. Um, Ellie was talking about his nine to five job. My nine to five job is the producer of NASCAR USA, which is the Motor Racing Network's country music pre-race show. Uh, that uh, that we do for about 120 radio stations uh, uh, across the country. So uh, the Country 500, that's kind right of up your deal. alley. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so it's a uh, it's a big deal for us. So if you're uh, uh, if you don't have plans for Memorial Day weekend, head on down to Daytona International Speedway. It'll be a great time. Uh, Ellie was talking about having a nine to five job uh, when when you were doing your full time racing. You also had a nine to five job. I mean, you went. I had like a twenty four seven job. Well, yeah, time, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, talk about that. And I mean, you. You flew your own plane just so you could get to the the, the venue to back to uh, back to the shop right. and be I'd there. Work on and then on Friday afternoon, hop in the plane, take off, go to the races. Sunday, whenever the race was over, get home, and so I could be back at work on Monday morning at my at uh, Herbert Performance. I had uh, almost 100 employees at one time, so it was like yeah. it was a yeah, it was a it was a lot of work, <laughs> a lot of responsibility, and right. so I'm glad that I I've gotten a little bit past that. Now I'm able to focus more of my time on the brakes, driving charity, and that's a lot of fun. That's but a lot of fun. It, it, but you you almost don't have time to think about uh, you know, anything else besides work and or racing. Right. Uh, you know, if any of the you know, stuff in between, the, the, any of the problems or whatever that, that crop up, you don't have time to think about that. You're either racing or you're you're working, one or the other. And, you know, I mean, there's, right. there's a lot of You're either working or sleeping. That's about all that you do <laughs> yeah, during that right. period of time. Yeah, a couple of notable things that happened over uh, at Atlanta that I thought was interesting. Also, Steve Torrance going three finals in a row, back-to-back -back wins. That was that was pretty awesome. And then Bo Butner winning pro stock and also low ET and top speed of the meet. Pretty, pretty good, uh, strong performance by Bo Butner and his team. We, we talk about it a lot here on Straight Line, and it, th this kind of started with uh, Eric Anders here uh, years ago, and just before she won her first race at Chicago, uh, Doug had come on and said, "You know what? You win that first one, you just, you'll just start knocking them down." 
and you couldn't have hit that any better. And yeah. I think this is going to be the same way for Bo Butner. Once he got that first one at Houston, now he's starting to rack him up. He's going to the finals. He's he's doing a lot of things. Uh, that, you know, that, and that's another neat thing that we've talked about quite a few times. It makes me mad every week when I see a funny car has a top speed <laughs> over a dragster yeah. at Atlanta. Antron Brown had top speed of the meet yep. faster than the funny cars, yep. over almost two miles an hour faster. So I was sure happy to see a top field car be in the top deal again. Uh, and real quick, let's show them the uh, Saturday Night Fever, guys. Uh, coming up uh, a little bit later in, in September, uh, the Brakes Gala is going to be that. Save the date, Saturday, September 16th. And that's a disturbing photo with John Travolta <laughs> and uh, Doug Herbert. So uh, thanks so much for everybody who was a part of today's show, and we will talk to you next week on The Straight Line. You've been listening to The Straight Line, presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. The Straight Line is the show for drag racing fans and was brought to you by Hercules Tires. Tune in again next Thursday on MRN.com and the MRN app. The Straight Line is also available on demand in MRN.com's Media Center, on our Facebook page, on YouTube, and in iTunes or the Google Play Store. The Straight Line is a production of the Motor Racing Network.